Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. We're going to see how well today goes because Summer's in a feisty mood. Just feisty. You should have seen the slow points I got. I think she had me on camera for like an extra five minutes just to make me sit there and be quiet. Uh, today, we're going to be painting some Pike Syndicates, continuing our Shadow Collective extravaganza that's been going on over the last couple weeks. Um, I've set myself quite the challenge. I'm going to try to paint an entire unit as much as possible in an hour. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I'm going to be using a lot of washes, a little bit of speed paints, and we're just going to mess around. I got the color scheme that I'll be using from one head of studio, Simone Elliott. So thank you, Simone, for giving me that. Um, she chose the colors right out of the latest Book of Boba Fett show. So if you've seen that, uh, you're going to notice that we're going to be using a lot of blues and a bit of golds. And so we're going to kind of take that color scheme and apply it to these Pike Syndicate foot soldiers to make some Book of Boba Fett Pike Syndicates. Uh, with that, let's just dive right in because we don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to be using... Um, Canterbury blue. I've got some fancy dancy mixing medium, so I'm going to make a wash, and all of this is pretty much going to be um, is pretty much going to be just like washing, glazing, inks, all of that good stuff today. Uh, so I'm going to grab some of this. I'm going to put it over here into my blue, and then we'll shade it all down with some ink if we need to. But we're just kind of going to like plow right through and see how fast we can go. A little speed painting challenge. If I can do most of it in an hour, I'll feel pretty great. If I can do all of it in an hour, I'll be thrilled. But we're just looking for tabletop quality on these fine folks, these fine fish people. And... Well, you're the one who put the camera there, friend. Friend! All right, so we're going to see how this stretches. Well, yeah, and then I went right to the position I told you I was going to be in, where you told me it was fine, Summer. You told me it was fine. Don't take anything I say <laughs> really? Don't take anything I say seriously. This is what I'm working with, people. This is how it works. All right. So I'm just going to play around with this wash until I get it kind of the consistency I want. I can always thin it out on the mini if I need to. Now summer's coming in, so clearly, clearly we're going to be moving that camera. You could just tell me to move too. No, I'm going to sharpen the image first. Oh my gosh. Sharpen it up then. Sharpen it up. All right, so you can see I'm effectively just using a high contrast paint method. I don't have like a speed paint that is the color that I wanted. Uh, the speed paint blue that I have is like very primary blue and I wanted something that had a bit more of a turquoise to it. And what I'm gonna do is, my plan is to come back through. Um, after this dries, we'll take a look at how nice and rich that color is and we might shade it down with like a blue ink a little blue glaze, something like that. And these minis have lots of really cool cloth detail on them. They got a lot of different layers. I'm going to be ignoring most of that, though, for a very simple color scheme. So, like, I'm not worried about the fact that he's got this nice little, like, poofy collar thing going on here, and then he's got sleeves. We're just kind of going to do all that the same color. Uh, the one... Thing I really haven't decided yet is what color am I going to paint their skin? Because uh, I don't think I have a really great quick recipe for that out of the paints that I pulled in front of me, but we'll just kind of figure it out. All right, so one down, going to the next one. We're just going to assemble it in. Oh, we're going to get Summer to paint. We're going to get Summer to paint. It's going to happen. Maybe it'll happen at Mini Stravaganza. It's true. Well, you're gonna you're gonna hang out with us after hours and paint, because that's what we all do. But are we gonna get you on one of the actual streams? That's the question. Given that I just went over the schedule and I didn't see a summer learns to paint on there, I'm not sure that that's true yet. But I could add it. I still have control. i to figure out what I'm going to do there, little like head wraps. I don't know if I want to do those blue yet or not. I can be a little sloppy around the armor plates because I am going to do those in metallic. So, since those won't be done with a wash, I'll be a little wilder with it. Uh, you know what? I was going to do the, I was going to do the arms as skin, and now I'm thinking, why would I do that to myself when I have only so much time? 
we're just going to make it sleeves within sleeves. They're double layered for coldness, you know, or sun protection. I imagine that a pike probably doesn't want to be too exposed to that Tatooine sun, so we'll just knock it out this way. I'm so nervous right now, Summer. There's so much, there's so much to do and so little time to do it in. No, you said Pike Syndicate Unit, paint stream. There's only one interpretation of that. It's you got to paint the whole unit in one stream. So here we go. We're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. Uh, all of the... Well, I don't know if all the cards, but if you haven't seen the announcements that Summer and BK put up today, the Pike Syndicate article did go up. It's got uh, a view of the unit card and I think a whole bunch of the upgrade cards for the unit. So and it might have a couple of the generic upgrades in there, if there are any. I know I have the box. I think the box is still sitting next to me from the bulk sample. Maybe it's over there. Is that Pike Syndicate? That's Pike Syndicate. Yeah. That box right there. That's the Pike Syndicate box. I don't want it right now. I'm painting. I don't have time. I don't have time to go through the cards, Summer. Stop trying to distract me. If you paint any faster, you will, You're not. I have to paint faster now. Oh, gosh. This is, this is the kind of abuse that we get here. Faster! I'm not going fast enough for you, huh? We'll see. Maybe we can pull out. Maybe we can pull out that box again and take a look at it. Let's keep going. Get things rocking and rolling here. Getting sloppier and sloppier the faster I go. It's great. It's fine. All right. Let's go to the next one. The commander card. I feel like, has that not been shown yet? I swear, I feel like we showed that at Mini Stravaganza so long ago, but maybe we didn't. I don't remember. There's so many cards. So many cards, so many reveals, so much stuff. I mean, if you ask really nicely, Summer might be willing to like go digging through that box and pull something out. Ultimately, it's her call. She is, she is the marketing manager. He doesn't need to know. He's not here right now. Yeah, he's not here right now. <laughs> he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind. Man, I like how you just went straight for it. Like you're being so nice here. You didn't even you didn't even wait for him to ask nice. You're just like, I'll just do it. I'll just dig. Are the cards actually in there? That's that's the next question. They should be. But those dev folks like to steal cards for playtest. All right, we're getting a little thick. I need to add a little bit more water to my wash because we're drying out here. There we go. It's okay if they're not all perfect. Oh, apparently BK spoiled the Bounty Hunter stuff. Oh, if you show them the cards, they're going to get the points, Summer. No, I'm not sure. It's not in camera. I know. I'm just I'm telling you what they're telling me. See, they're being very honest right now. I they're found out. It is not in your They're No, that's not how it works. I don't have the power here. <laughs> don't. Don't you try to Gandalf the white me over here, okay? I know I have no power here. Whoop. Get that going. Get this going. Plus, you know, if we start, we don't want to be showing stuff on the painting streams because that's what your articles are for. Your gorgeous articles, of which there are now two. Woo! Woo! They're going to look so good on that new website that's coming, too. It's going to be great. Right. Yep. Get them 
there. Ooh, get that down. That's right. We're not doing skin on the on the arms. We're gonna do them as sleeves. It's fine. All right. Okay. That's gonna be it for the blue. Let's go. Oh, no. Oh. Immediately see something that I missed on this fella. I'll get that cleaned up. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Just in the interest of time, we're going to do their little head do rag things, their head coverings. We're going to do them blue too. I think in the image that Simone sent, they're like, they're like pike bodyguards, so they have different, they have a different ensemble that they're wearing. But their head wrappings were definitely blue, so we'll just go with the blue. We'll be fine. This turned out a little more turquoise pulled over that gray than I wanted, but we can darken that up with a couple of washes if we have time. And if not, hey, I got close. Incorrect. Close absolutely counts when it comes to hobby because if you're happy with it, it's all good. We'll say it's inspired by Book of Boba. It's not a one-to-one. -one. Plus, since we never see these guys, like maybe they just don't have the same dye. Maybe they don't have the same dye. Um, what do I want? Stipend? The same, the same dye stipend as, you know, the fancier boys. So their colors are just a little more, they're a little more turquoisey. They, they can't afford the nice royal blue dye. They got to get this, they got to get this cheaper one. Doesn't come from, you know, one of the, one of the primo pike plants. All right. Okay. So with that done, we're going to go over and I'm going to go to my, where is it? There we go, Cobalt Alchemy. So this is gonna be my metallic color that I'm gonna use here. We're just pretty much gonna use it straight out of the pot. And we're just gonna start knocking out all of our metals. <laughs> and I'm not gonna to be too, too concerned about which metallics or which parts of the armor that I do in this color because I can always go over it with my amber and that gold will cover this blue very very easy so kind of make that simple and then we can layer up as we have time or want to do and again this is going to look a little flat and like monotone monochrome until we start adding in our washes and then we're going to get some really nice definition and some shading and all that good stuff be somewhat careful around the neck because I don't know what I'm going to do with the skin still. Probably just use some speed paint gray. They were pretty. The skin tone was pretty much a flat alien gray as far as what we want to do here. If you really start looking at that image from the show, there's a lot of different undertones. Like any skin has a lot of different undertoning. Who knows what color pike blood is? Love to find out someday. But I don't officially know the answer to that, so we'll worry about it later. And the other thing, too, here is because I'm going to go over this with, like, a dark wash, I don't have to be perfect, perfect on my coverage. So that'll help with our speed as well. But we can knock out both of these things. We'll be, like, 80% of the way there, really. Especially because we should be able to just do one blue wash over everything and get some very different tones. Ugh. The 2020 promo kit. Uh, which promo kit, I guess, is the question? Or the skirmish one? 
2020 promo kit. I don't know which kit that is, so I can't tell you if you could get a reprint of it or not. Maybe. If Courtney, if Corndog Courtney is in the chat, she handles all of the organized play stuff. So she might be able to figure out a way to get a popular kit or two into reprint. Oh, Summer's laughing, so somebody said something here. There you go. See Shadow Collective Mall going to get his own article. I think everything in the Shadow Collective gets its own article, basically. So you've still got an article for the Super Commandos. you got a Mall article. Gar Saxon article, maybe. So much content. So much info. Do, 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 And if all you're really hoping for is, you know, reprints of like full art unit cards and stuff that are for very popular core units, I really wouldn't worry too much about that because those will always come back around. You don't necessarily need the exact same organized play kit to see reprints or redos of promo cards. It's only really the narrative kits or game night kits that have like unique scenarios or different game modes and stuff. Those materials obviously don't wind up getting reused since they're not awards, that's actually the kit. So there you would want the kit to be reprinted so that you could have the opportunity to do it again. But as far as prizes, alternate art card promos, and all that stuff, any of those can wind up in a future kit for sure. Since it seems like, from looking at chat, that's the number one desire from that 2020 set. It's just getting hands on some of the cool promos that came out of it. All right, sir, you have a very large fancy mask because you're the leader so we'll do a little bit of blue on here and then we'll do the rest in that amber gold Ooh. clean up our mess here there we go All right, next, this is the exciting part of painting a unit summer. This is what happens when you ask for it. You get the same process on five different duders. Five fishmen, Philip J. Fishman. If there are questions in the chat, Summer, you're going to have to call them out for me because I'm not looking that close. I know, but you're so quiet. See, I feel like you're just, yeah, well, I know that's happening. I don't feel like that. I just know, I just know that's a fact. <laughs> kind of like you know the sun's going to come up the next day. I just know. Summer's, summer's judgment is right there. No! Oh, we lost an arm. I know. It happens. Look, it happens. It happens to the best of us. And the average of us, and I'm definitely on the average scale. It would never happen to a Dallas Kemp, I guess. I shouldn't impugn his name. His miniatures would never fall apart. That's not true. I've watched them fall apart all the time. That's okay. This guy, just he'll just be missing his arm. We'll finish the arm separate, then we'll glue them back together. Uh-huh. These are the things that happen in the real world. Mini arms fall off. You got to go back and re-glue them later. You just work through it. It's fine. It's fine. He 
See, I'm waiting for you to like make Dallas do some serious speed painting challenges here because, oh, let's go to this arm. Mm, he chose to do that though. And he didn't even finish, let's be honest. What time is it? Ah, oh, 40 minutes? We got this. Well, yeah, you got to. You got to finish. You got to finish all these parts. It's true. He, he that, that pike, he made uh, an inappropriate comment to the wrong old man in a bar. You know that wasn't the first time. Obi-Wan knew exactly where to go. That wasn't the first time in the Moss Eisley Cantina. He'd been there before. They knew. The regulars knew right when he walked in. They're like, oh, there's that guy. Don't mess with him. It's not like Obi-Wan pulled out his galactic communicator and Googled smuggler dens. He knew exactly where to go. He didn't ask for directions or anything. It's like, this is the place. Innocent farm boy Luke. I know. Well, she has a mic, I think, but she chooses not to use it. I'm not the one stopping Summer from talking on a mic. She could do it. She chooses not to. All my co-hosts, they're very shy. They never want to participate with me. It's very strange. I don't get why. The people want to hear you, Summer. They want to hear your pithy one-liners that you keep throwing my way. See, if you don't get on a mic, I'll just keep claiming that you're saying things, and then there'll be no one to stop me, because I'll, I'll get you to talk somehow, some way. We'll get you involved. All right. Whoa, last one. We're going to be really leaning on our dark wash here to cover up all of our sweet mistakes, except for those. It's not going to cover up metallic slop, so we'll have to fix that ourselves. But we can do that. Some random things to talk about here, Summer. Oh no, we missed the little like wing flap. You gotta tell me to come over too. Come on now, you're just letting me like flail. You did that. <laughs> you're just letting me flail. I look up and all of a sudden there's everything there. What dictates how many pikes you can take in, say, a Republic army? Uh, the rules for mercenaries dictate that. Easy peasy. When you see the RG update for mercenaries, it will very clearly denote how mercenaries are acquired in faction armies. And then the battle force rules will very clearly illustrate how those armies are built using a collection of units that are denoted by the battle force itself. So, but mercenaries in terms of like general faction armies, so for example, these pikes, which can go into Republic, Imperial, 
separatist or rebellion armies. They all work exactly the same in terms of the number of units that you're allowed to take, how they count for different things. When it comes to the force org charts, and those are universal. Among everything that has the mercenary, Rule. But the biggest things like we've talked about before are they don't count towards your core requirements for your faction army. So a unit of pikes is not going to replace one of the three core choices that you have to take. And you do have a certain field allowance of them that you're allowed to take per... type in the force org itself. Okay, we're done with that. We're gonna move on to grab some of this black ink. I think I'm gonna make my dark wash now. Then we'll do the gold after. So a little bit of black ink. Use a little bit of blue ink. Maybe, are you open? You were open. Where's my pokey stick? There it is. With that. All right, this physical battle force is still slated for release sometime in summer. I believe that they are still expected to be releasing or starting to release at the end of summer. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Grab a little bit of this. A little bit of my medium. Mix that in there. A lot of water for this. Let's see how that looks. It's very blue. Do I want a little more black in it? I think I do. Oh, uh, we know how that works before June. The rules for it will be out before the release, which is slated for June but I couldn't tell you how early that might be. Okay, let's give this a try and see how it looks. So we're just gonna give this a quick little test. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we're just gonna slop this over everything. This will be how we This will be how we do it, probably. Maybe could have gotten away with doing the skin and then just doing one solid dark wash over the whole thing, but it's okay. So now we just hope that we have enough of it, or otherwise we go back and we remix it. But we're just going to use this nice little shade wash over everything because our colors are very similar. We got blue metallics, we got blue cloth, kind of all come together really nice. Big thing here is just watching any excessive pooling. So we don't want like big gross pools of wash, like right there on the shoulder. So we'll pull those off. And that'll be something that we kind of have to watch throughout the process because it will start to pool up on us in different spots. And if we come to it too late, we won't be able to fix it, but that's okay too. We can just leave it. And then we can go back through and like mess with it later. So you can be pretty precious when you're slapping on wash because we're just trying to get through these guys. I'm going to try not to be too, too touchy about it. Again, this is just looking to get these pike foot soldiers ready for the tabletop and done in approximately an hour. So speed is the name of the game. We're not necessarily going to worry about everything being beautiful or super fancy or anything like that. A 
You can live with them looking great from about three feet away. If they look good from arm's length, then we've really succeeded super, super well. If they look good from three feet away, then we've still succeeded. And if they look painted from three feet away, I've still accomplished my goal. So there you go. Summer, you can't beat me. I set the terms of engagement. We'll see, though. We've got 30 minutes left and a decent amount of ways to go. But hopefully, if the stream does anything, it just inspires everyone out there to know that you can approach hobby in a lot of different ways. It doesn't always have to be beautiful and super artsy. Sometimes it's very blue collar, like, get it done. Get them painted. Get them painted for the table so that they can be used in battle. And they'll set the stage and they'll look really cool. You know? Everybody's got their own goals and their own destiny. Oh my gosh, what happened? This is what happens when you don't clean your well palette. It's okay. Fixable. The, uh, all the water in the mixing medium apparently has revitalized the speed paints that were used like last week. My goodness. I think Summer just sabotaged me, though. She's secretly adding colors into the well palette when I wasn't looking when we were getting set up. She's like, I'll get him. I'll get him. Laying some sinister traps for me. I get you. I see how you are. I see how you are. Was the Shadow Collective developed from scratch? Um, the initial concepts and a lot of the sculpting and design work in terms of the miniatures themselves was started before the changeover. Um, so we mostly finished everything in terms of the sculpts and all that. Uh, there was some design and development work as well in terms of the rules. That was started, so it was, it was like a mixed bag. Um, it wasn't done completely in one place or another, so. It's kind of a fusion. Oh, Summer's digging through cards now, apparently. But yeah. The whole Shadow Collective was definitely a fusion. The change, uh, switch over to them being uh, mercenaries and the inclusion of mercenaries in the game and that kind of concept was uh, really initiated and realized under AMG and the dev work that we did here. Um, and as we've talked about before, a lot of that was due to our discussions with LFL and wanting to make sure that all of these kind of different affiliations and groups within the Star Wars galaxy, especially the criminal element, but you know, even things like Ewoks and uh, Gungans and all those kind of different groups, Dathomirian and Night Sisters, these things that they don't really fit into the general idea of a full faction army, right? They... They don't go off world and invade other planets necessarily. They have a standing army and they do battle throughout the different media and series, but they're not they're not on the same level as say, you know, the Empire or the Rebellion, Galactic Republic, the Separatist Alliance. Um, they're you know, they're more locked in in terms of the narrative, in terms of where they're going, what they're fighting for. Their goals are on a smaller scale. Uh, and so we wanted to find a way to make sure that we could continue to explore the breadth and diverse like galaxy that is Star Wars with all of its different cool kind of mini factions, but also in a way that felt correct and true to the stories and the IP and being a steward of the IP and everything 
uh, like we are. You know, we're entrusted a great responsibility in terms of um, creating a game and a world that feels correct to Star Wars. That, you know, we hit upon the kind of the mercenary discussion and the idea that not only does it allow players to make their own stories up and tell their own choice, like if you want to see Gungans fighting stormtroopers someday, you know, this, the mercenary kind of idea allows that to be a thing in a way that lets you as the player make those decisions and tell the story and the choices, but it also allows you as the player to tell stories that are more canonical to the Star Wars experience, and that's really important. Um, it's important that the game feels very much like it's still grounded in Star Wars and its mythology and its stories, in addition to giving players the opportunity to exercise their ability to tell stories and to do things in a way that they would like to. And so it's always a balancing act, but uh, the mercenary kind of rules and movement and the changeover happened during the process where we had kind of stepped in and the transition had occurred and stuff. All right, let's see how this, are we gonna like this graveyard gray speed paint? Is it gonna give us enough contrast? We're gonna find out. Well, that's not terrible. I think we can live with it, especially just for the blasters. I don't know if I would use it for the belts and stuff, but that's okay. Shoot. Take our disarmed fella. You're going to get your arm back, boy. I'm not going to forget about you. I know Summer thinks I will, but I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, and Battle Forces came out of the same conversation. Um, and the initial concepts for them had definitely been discussed and kind of started before the changeover. And so we kind of took a lot of the groundwork that was there and combined it with the mercenary idea and those discussions and really kind of um, finished it out. So everything, everything Shadow Collective is definitely a group effort. But that's just creativity and, you know, everything we do anyway. It's a lot of collaboration and internal discussion and internal work and then external with play testers and once products and units and everything else go live and the community has them in their hands there's a bit of collaboration there too because we do watch and observe and pull data and try to figure out, you know, how to make these games continue to thrive and be successful. Okay. So I know I don't want to use that for the skin. So what are we going to use for the skin? Hmm. 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 Well, we think about that. Let's go to our gold. All right, so. Splow. So this is going to be our amber alchemy. We're going to just go in and see if this will work on the faces the way I want it to. We'll definitely need, definitely need a bit of a shade wash, but that's okay. You can wash that down. Uh, dur, dur, dur. Go over here and do that. A little like whip head. Got a little bit of gold. Happy enough with that. We're gonna have to do the little pouches and belts on them too, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> to be fair, if I wasn't trying to do right 
by one Simone Elliott. I probably would have just let that blue wash sit over the gray zenith because I think that was a pretty cool effect. But the image from Book of Boba, they definitely had some really nice gold like filigree on their suits. So we'll get a little bit of that sense, hopefully from doing the face coverings in that. And I think on this guy, since he is the chief fish in charge, we'll come in and whatever this little symbol is here on his armor, kind of knock that out as well. And that gold, I'll be a little sloppy there because it won't matter because when I go back through and do my dark wash, be fine. You can see I'm really not being precious about those eyeballs. Normally I'd probably try to work around them, but we're just gonna, in the interest of time and speed, we're just gonna let our dark wash be really thick and run into those eyeballs. And it will give us our definition and our contrast there. It really just comes down to determining how far out we want those to go. Eh, we'll go all the way. We'll go all the way to their little catfish-like whiskers. Things. Plow. We'll come back to this guy and do that for him. So again, a lot of like painting for tabletop and speed, the biggest thing that you can think about as you kind of go through stuff is uh, that shade step, that wash step, that contrast step is going to be your biggest, your biggest uh, cheat, quote unquote, not really cheat, but your biggest tool in the toolbox. You don't have to worry so much about highlights being perfect or kind of building anything out like that. Like it's all about the contrast. So if you can get good contrast through a nice dark wash, that'll take you to like 75% of the way. Uh, and 75% is like 100% when it comes to tabletop. And you can always go back later and you know, pop things up, do some mid-tone reclamation, do some highlights, all of that, or you can just leave it. And you see a lot of methods online and like hobby tips about painting things fast and they say base coat it and then use a dip. You know, you make a you make a basically a dark wash that you just dunk the miniatures in and then shake them off and they're done. We're doing the same thing here, we're just doing it with a brush. Um and the thing about that is, is that you can make a dark wash out of any color. So if we wanted to do purple, we want to do magenta, we want to do brown, we do black, you know, as our, as our primary color. Um, dark washing is just simply taking a wash, making it kind of thick, and letting it contrast up. So you can see how it just dries. We're getting all these nice definitions and all these nice lines and everything that's going on. Uh, well, you can dark wash black robes. The trick with that is to paint gray. So you would do, instead of painting it black and then dark washing it, which obviously wouldn't work because it'd be black on black, and we all know how that works out. What I would do is I would paint all of the cloth gray, and then I would make a really strong black wash, and I'd just wash it over the gray, and it would look perfectly like a neutral gray black. You can do it with blue as well. Um, so yeah, when you're approaching black and you want to do a dark wash, you kind of think about it in the opposite. You paint your highlight color and then you wash it with the dark. Whereas here we painted our blue and then we washed it with a darker blue. This is a good point. Um, but the principles largely remain the same. Um, I think we're going to do, I know this isn't quite correct, but we're going to try, I'm going to try on one of these. I'm going to use some of this hardened leather brown. We're just going to see how this works for our skin color. And I already know I don't like it, so we're just going to do that and get rid of it. And we're going to think more about that skin. And I'm going to grab some thrash metal. 
while I think about what I want to do for the skin. And I look at my massive pile of paints that are all disorganized and I don't know what to do. I'm just gonna come in and do these batons that I haven't touched yet. I think we have oh, this guy, this little whip handle. Oop. Be really uncomfortable to have to use like a pure steel handled whip, but I don't care about their comfort. I care about my speed. So sorry, bro. Brofish. Oh, that was terrible. Summer loved it though. All right, I do think, oh, we're just gonna throw them on the ground. On the ground! Uh, what color is this? No, that's, yeah, maybe this will work. We'll give it a try. Because we're, oh yeah, that's, okay, let's, so negro gray, miskatonic gray, mix it. Mix it. A little bit of matte medium. A whole lot of water. Okay, let's see how this works. Do, do, do. No one ever looks at the feet, so we can cheat pretty hard on the feet. And we got the necks. Little tentacles coming out the back. Our hands. So these are going to be pretty rough, but that's okay. We're just trying to get color on them. Probably what I would wind up doing overall is just going back and doing a traditional base coat wash highlight on the skin because I've been so fast everywhere else that I don't have a lot of zenith left to work with for these washes to really come out properly. Um, but challenge a challenge. So we're just going to like burn right through. The other thing that probably would have been the smartest of, of tricks is to just be like, they're wearing gloves and then not really worried about any of the skin. Uh, we could have like pulled that off probably pretty convincingly as well. And we're still going to wind up in a similar situation here. But that's okay. Like this is the one step that I would probably go back to and I'd be like, all right, I don't, I think everything else is working really well, but that skin is going to need an extra highlight. So a really quick dry brush, even if it was rough, just to pick out some of like the really great definition on little neck muscles and stuff would be perfect. Uh, there's lots of ways, taking a little bit of extra time than I would want to go back through and do it. Alternatively, I might have been able to do the skin first. You know, if I was to do another unit of these and say, let's learn some lessons here, maybe start with the skin, but I feel like then you'd have to play so carefully around the skin that you'd lose a lot of your speed. Um, and given that we, you know, we gave them full covering shirts and all that stuff. We really minimized how much skin is showing. I think we can just go back through and confidently say, okay, the hands, the feet, and the neck are the place where we're just going to go back through and do some more traditional classic kind of painting. And that might slow us down a little bit, but it's not going to slow us down a lot. And you'll learn this stuff when you do test minis and things too. Uh, there's a lot of really great ways to figure stuff out and make sure that it all works. You could be a little slower, not maybe set yourself an hour. Oh, nine minutes. We can do it. I believe in us. No, I said if I had time. I made no promises. No promises. 
Rude, you can't make promises for me. You're not my manager. Supervisor, that's it. You are the boss, though. You are Tony Danza. Oh, yes. The boss. All right. Cool, cool. Let's go and grab mm, this palette bone color will work, I think. It's very sepia-y. And let's give our gold a really quick shade. Let's see how we're gonna, now I'm using speed paints like we talked about last week. If you were around for when I was last on stream and first trying speed paints for the very first time. We use them in their normal way, so I just painted them all over a zenith, like gray, white base coat. But we talked about how their translucency actually lets you use them as washes more traditionally as well. And that's what we're gonna do here on our golds. So you can see how we can mess around with that and get some pretty cool undertoning some effects. It just kind of replaces in some ways your washes. You do have to be sort of careful. I think I'm going to come back through here and just kind of push that color out. Come in here on the chest and remember I said how I wasn't super worried that my color was kind of running into the blues and not being perfect, that's because I'm just going to mash a whole lot of shade to really give that symbol a lot of contrast so that it pops out nice. So you can really see it. What am I showing? What card, what card did you promise them, Summer? You don't remember, do you? Well, as we've already discussed, because you refuse to get on a mic, they can't hear you. Oh, they can hear me. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. That's not what they told me. You can show this one right here. That one right there? That one right there. Okay. I'll trust that this will make them happy. I'm going to trust you, Summer. I didn't pick. I'm just going to make this very clear. <laughs> not my choice. Go to management if you don't like it. If it was not the droid you were looking for, please discuss it with Summer and BK. I am just a messenger. You like that? Now they're just like, oh, what is it? It's just like, it's just terrible. Low expectations leads to more excitement. If you promised the world, if I was like, oh, this is the best card ever, there's no way that would ever live up to the hype. But if I undersell it, then you'll look like a hero and I'll look like a fool. Like, how could you say that this wasn't great? This is amazing. I'll be like, you got me. You got me. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Make sure those eyeballs get filled up really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yo, oh, five minutes. We can do it. All I got to do is paint some, um, what do you call them? Those things, strappy straps. And for that, we're just going to use some straight flat black. Because I got no time. Swap it out. Luckily, not all of them have straps. These little thigh holsters. Those nice and dark, and then again, much like the skin, if I wanted to, I could go back through and retouch it back up. Oh, and I still got to do the whip. Summer, how could you let me forget about the whip? That's all right. We can paint that whip lickety split. 
30 seconds. Time it. I am going to. Sweet. Oh, he doesn't even have a strap. That guy just saved me 30 seconds. Awesome. Leader bro is my favorite. He doesn't, he doesn't need a holster. He never holsters his pistol. Blaster thingy. Okay. I'm be like, this was the weirdest stream ever. In my countdown summer, how much time do I have left? Come on, give it to me. Oh, we got this. I have so much time. I have so much time. I'm going to thin out this black, and I'm going to give these batons a really quick wash. I know. I know. Now I'm cocky. This is pride goeth before the fall, as they say. But hey, we're gonna we're gonna live our best contrast life here. You know? They're not gonna win any they're not gonna win any painting competition awards, but they're gonna win the award for painted miniatures. We're gonna get that sweet hobby prize from the next Legion organized play kit because we're gonna be playing with painted pikes. All right, shaded. <gasps> Let's grab our, you know, we're gonna do some red and some yellow. <gasps> oh, now I'm getting, you know what? No, we're gonna, we're gonna use purple. We're gonna use some high dweller purple and we're gonna use some high lord blue. And we're gonna make a blue purple whip instead of an orange yellow whip, which we've seen plenty of. Come here, whip boy. Ugh. Oh my gosh. Killing me, you're killing me. Mash that color in like that. Grab that blue. Mash that color in like that. Just kind of wet blend those two together. Mess around with it. Go back to my purple a little bit. Water it down. Yeah, there we go. Start mixing and melding. Those colors are, whoop, those colors are actually a little darker than I thought they'd be. Interesting, interesting. That's okay. This is what happens when you experiment. Go off book. All right. One minute. Well, I guess that's where we end this. I would normally go back and futz with this a little bit more, but hey, there's color on it. You can tell that it's a blue purple whip. So we're gonna count this as a win. And I still have time to show this one card left. <gasps> oh, Summer called it. No cards, no cards. All right, so apparently this is one of the, one of the upgrades that you'll find in the Pike Syndicate pack. And it is available for anyone who can take a grenade upgrade. Sonic Imploders, amazing. This is what you picked. This was, this was all you. So, so there you go, thanks Summer. Thanks, Summer Chat. Thanks, Summer. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I hope that you had fun. I certainly enjoyed the challenge. We got an entire unit, even with a little break going on, all painted up, ready to go. Um, you know, they're not, again, they're not, like, stunning, but they're done, and they're beautiful, and I love them, and I can't wait to play with them some more. Uh, on streams and stuff like that. And I will probably go back and do a little bit of updating to the skin and stuff, but for an hour, five pike foot soldiers, uh, take a little bit more time, a little less pressure, you have a lot of fun, and this was a blast. So I hope that you were inspired and see some opportunities to do some very cool stuff with your own. 
uh, Legion miniatures, whether those are the Pike soldiers that are coming out later on in June or anything that you're working on now. There's a lot of different ways to explore the hobby and approach things and get amazingly painted miniatures on the table fairly quickly. Till next time, I'm Will Schick. You can join us tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific, Dallas Camp will be on showing more hobby tips and tricks. And we'll be back next week at 1 p.m. Pacific on Tuesday. Till next time, thank you for joining me. Goodbye. So close, 201, 201, 60 seconds over, 60 seconds over.